Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome to our latest Dodcast episode. Fantastic to have you with us. I know you're probably all sweltering in the sunshine somewhere, uh, and this is probably a nice welcome relief, taking a bit of time off to, to listen to what our news is here at My Name's Doddy Foundation. Uh, and today we are joined by a fantastic array of guests. Uh, we bring you the Dodcast courtesy of our wonderful supporters at Aberdeen Standard Investments, uh, our friends at Rugby Pass, including our wonderful producer Tim Groves, the font of all knowledge, and his friend Jim Hamilton. And our guests are, well, who else? Of course, we've got Doddy Weir with us today. We'll hear from Doddy in a moment. Uh, we also have Henry Fraser with us. Henry, a great friend of the Foundation, former Saracens Academy player, who was paralysed from the shoulders down after a freak accident in Portugal uh, and he's now a renowned mouth artist uh, and we're going to explain a little bit about what he's been doing with the foundation later but it's great to have Henry with us too. We have mm -hmm. Simon Halliday. Simon of course many of you'll know from his days pulling on the England shirt. He was a finalist at the World Cup, played on the wing at centre, played for Bath. Uh, he's now chairman of European rugby uh, but most importantly as far as today's concerned, he runs the Sporting Wine Club, uh, which leads me nicely onto our final guest today, who is Skalk Berger Sr. Uh, now, Skalk was, of course, an international lock forward for the Springboks. His son, young Skalk Jr., played in four World Cups, of course, a very famous uh, flanker, and Skalk uh, and his sons run the wonderful, well bedacked uh, vineyard down in the Cape, in the Western Cape near we uh, Wellington. So, uh, we're going to be talking about some of his wine and a very special wine that he's created uh, in just a moment. So a huge welcome to all of you. We come from around the globe today. So we've got uh, Doddy sitting on the beach uh, in Gatehouse of Fleet looking suntanned and relaxed with a bottle of wine. Uh, we've got Henry looking like he's in his studio, looking great as well in the sunshine. Simon sits in his office with a nice bottle of red. Skalk is down there in the Cape and I come to you from Tokyo in my quarantine hotel. Uh, and it's great to have this international flavour today as we kick off. So before we do anything, we always do this in our podcast. Doddy, how the devil are you? What are you up to? And it looks like you're enjoying the sunshine. Joe, yes. Hello. Lovely to catch up with you. Uh, what a subject we're going to talk about today. <laughs> Very close to my heart and red wine. But with that on a personal statement, I'm fighting them in the air a little bit harder. You probably get that from my voice. It's been quite busy since the lockdown and the lines have happened. But with that, we're still getting out and about, we're, as I mentioned, enjoying the lovely weather that we're getting in the UK at the moment. And what great accommodation to have nice weather and a lovely bit of red wine. Which leads me nicely on to our latest uh, bit of news which is the wonderful Doddy Wine. So Scott can you just give us an idea of that where the idea came from and also how you set about creating uh, an amazing red wine that resonates and fits with somebody as iconic uh, as Doddy? Well Jill you know um, we as a family have been involved with the Doddy Ware Foundation through our guest house here in Wellington and it's also to be uh, through the wonderful work of Simon and uh, Kenny Logan, you know, and, and meeting up and uh, there's, there's been uh, an auction prize in uh, the UK to come to the Bradgate Manor House, I guess, us. And we used to get between eight and ten uh, people, you know, five, four, five couples coming to our guest house and uh, we would organize them around the Western Cape. And then one of the days was uh, a tour of the, the wine cellar and we would do a big braai, a barbecue on the stupia and give them a real South African hospitality. And it's been wonderful. And, uh, you know, the Dodi Weir Foundation made a lot of money through that. And then one evening uh, sitting in a wine tasting uh, in, in the UK, in London, um, Kenny said to me, how about us doing a wine? You know, and Simon started chatting. And we said, okay, let's all try, do it around, uh, you know, the Lions tour. It's just been a wonderful honor for us to sit around and uh, decide how do we put five cultivars together? And the number five is so important for us, you know, the number that Doddy wore. Simon, let's hear from you now, because it was a fantastic idea to, to bring 
Skulk and the foundation together in this way. Tell us a little bit more about the background. So look, I mean, Sporting Wine Club, which has been going for a few years now, you know, brings together all of these things uh, for me. You know, the criteria for the club is that the winemakers have to have an authentic connection to sport. And obviously there's nothing more authentic than, um, than Skulk and, and the family having played so um, eminently for their country. And so uh, when the foundation um, approached me, and obviously I've played against Doddy, I've known Doddy for years, and uh, uh, Kenny Logan said, look, you know, let's try and do something. And we'd already had Doddy and I some experience together at the, uh, the Heineken Champions Cup uh, final uh, um, up in Newcastle, uh, where Doddy, of course, used to play. So we were supporting him there. And we said, what about it doing a wine? And of course, as Skulls already explained, um, where would be the connection, you know, to match Doddy's number on the shirt, five. So five great varieties, which is one of Skull's absolute expertise is to, to build a five great variety red blend. So absolutely in Skull's uh, street, of course, Skull played second row forward. So, and Skull Jr., you know, played at the same time as Doddy. So this whole thing was connecting. And I think wine winemakers with sporting backgrounds understand good causes understand how lucky they've been all sports people know how lucky they've been in their in their world to participate at the highest level and, and what can we do to you know resonate with with great causes and, and sporting wine club has you know significant um involvement in in charities so this was natural for us and of course when we hear that um with henry's great capabilities as an artist and we think right let's let's make a a unique label um, that's going to fit with all of this, and uh, and it just it just seemed natural uh, that we would do this. It's it's not just the money being raised um, through the sale of the product that, as you say, is only two days away. The ship is not going to sink between now and, and the UK. It better not. Um, and there's a lot of people, you know, inevitably when we announced all of this, the the what I call an outpouring of alcoholic love is the way I describe it. Um, and any number of people from places I've never heard of up in Scotland. I'm half Scottish, did you know that? But anyway, um, uh, and, uh, but from all around the country, um, from all around the UK, I've got people ringing in from the USA, how can I get the wine? And of course they all know what it signifies. So, you know, in this fight against MND, we're all in it and we're all helping as much as we can. And this is a product that will it will come again and again because it's so good to drink. I know very few of you have got to drink it, but, um, uh, you know, so I say the people who religiously and faithfully ordered the wine, um, not long to wait now. So I feel incredibly proud and privileged to be part of this story. Um, it's not going to finish here because if we are going to do another, another story of the same type, because everyone's going to come back for more or else we'll build into to another, product it can be a rosé it can be uh, you know we're, we're, there's lots of choice to to grow this story skulk will be grinning from ear to ear that we'll come back with another order for some more wine but um i'm just so pleased to be part of it and uh, in this lion's year when my name's Dolly foundation is, is a charity partner of the british and irish lions and i was a selector in 2001 and you know just remember the whole excitement anyone who's been connected with the lions tour knows that but it's not just for this year you know, this is something that will keep going, and, uh, and uh, as we as we fight MND um, with Doddy. Well, thank you, Simon, and thank you for your support. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the the investment in research that we've been able to make off the back of this fantastic um, support in a moment. But I want to bring in Henry here because if you ever get your hands on a bottle of this very fine wine, and I'm going to get some tasting notes from Skulk in a moment, just to tell us a little bit about the wine specifically. But when you see the bottle, it's a beautiful bottle with a stunning label um, and it for those that are listening and not being able to see this Simon's holding up the bottle and it's got our iconic um, tartan there it's got some information on the back as well it's uh, Henry's interpretation of the, the tartan Henry tell us a little bit about your involvement yeah so I was very um, fortunate obviously to be asked to be part of this amazing project and create um, the design on the on the label and yeah, I mean, obviously when it came in immediately, I you know, said yes without kind of any hesitation. And it was a lot of um, 
we kind of had a lot of back and forth. I was kind of drawing a lot of little sketches and sending them to um, foundation, and it was great fun actually because I've never done anything like this. I've never been part of a project like this before, so for me it was brand new. It was a brand new challenge, um, but one that you know ultimately relishing to kind of I want to do my best for Dottie and do the best foundation and represent it in a way that you know Dottie and the foundation deserve to be and um yeah and everything we kept going back to was the tartan was the were the colors of that and you know I'd like you said it's kind of my interpretation of the tartan it's my sort of the way I wanted to portray it and keep it in a way kind of almost quite rustic quite you know, something unique, something a bit different, something that felt felt real. Something that, you know, is honest that, you know, Dottie's a very honest man about everything he's been through, about his challenges and his struggles and his determination and honesty. And you know, that's something I guess I want to try and bring through. And that's, you know, I hope in a way that I've done that and I hope people enjoy it and enjoy the wine and ultimately support the foundation and the research that you guys are all Really. Skulk, tell me about the wine. If you were describing this wine to somebody who enjoys the red wine but doesn't know anything about a, a blend of five different uh, grapes, tell us a little bit about what you tried to create there and, and what it tastes like. What we wanted to do is make a wine easy drinkable, but also to let the wine age, you know, which is sometimes difficult. And uh, because maybe in 10, 20 years from now, there's somebody who would like to remember this tour and remember the fact that they they were you know obviously they they enjoyed the tour and the lines did well and and hopefully not for the Springboks that they won and they became a very wonderful team but hopefully that also takes place the dear lord would take care of that so obviously we would like the wine to age and sometimes wines that you try and make that's going to age they don't drink nicely now you know so we, we had a very, it took us quite some time to go through all the various barrels and the cultivars and stuff like that. And then to put this together so that you had all these various components of drinking easily now, being fruit, nice and wine, full of fruit, and letting people also remind people of South Africa and the fact that it was done in this year and how South African wines are. And then also with regards to, um, you know, what does South Africa stand for? You know, and what does forward play stand for? And what does it mean to be a tight forward of either side being the uh, Lions or, or Springbok in playing rugby? And what is the relationship with, with wine? You know, and, and the honest thing about being wine, you know, it gets made in vineyards. So eventually what we did is we ended up with five cultivars. And I've written a piece which Siphon's going to put forward. Uh, and I relate... I've sort of like likened each one of these cultivars to one of the forwards. So what, what I've what I've said is the carbon front that you've got in here, that's the lock forward, you know? They grow with vigor and are the most straight and upright of all vines, just like Jack and the Beanstalk. And they stay like that through their lifespan. They are very adaptable to a variety of soil types and exhibit the terroir they grow in. Flavors of tobacco, raspberry, bell pepper and cassis. That's that's the Cabernet Franc. That's me and Dottie. Those are the two locks that keep everything together. The Cabernet Franc. Then we've got Merlot in there as well. Now Merlot is the most adaptable red cultivar. And it's got a soft freshness to it, which makes it great for blending with a great mid palette and feel. And just like the flankers are the link between the forwards and the backs, the left hand to hand passes to thus create an overlap. But solid enough to keep at bay those sneaky scrum of snipes around the fringes of our tight forward territory, the scrub, rucks, and molds. Then we've also got the Cabernet Sauvignon in here. And obviously, this is a 2019 cultivar. And the Cabernet Sauvignon is the props. They, they're the solid people. You know, they, uh, they're the special type uh, son of the soils, you know. They love, they love gravel to produce deep, dark flavors, being low yielding to create tannins and acids that allow the wine to age well. And then also, it's also important to keep them healthy. There's good props as Cabernet Sauvignon are few and far between. The fourth one we put in here is a unique one, Mubedre. We say that's the number eight. The one that roams the field looking for work and many times not finding any at all. 
but he will be there on hand at crucial moment late in the game to collect an inside pass from a back to score the match winning try and be awarded the man of the match award and be on all the front pages with glory the following morning. Obviously, it is used in much smaller quantities in the blend, but can exhibit great flavors like earthiness, tasting of wild and farmyard. And then the fifth cultivar that we've got in here is Petit Vidot. So we also know the little green one because of the late ripening is the hookah, and for no other than reason that it takes time to ripen, is used very sparingly. Like a hookah not always in a blend at most of the time to stiffen up the mid palate of Cabernet Sauvignon. As we know, you need a good strong hookah to straighten out and stiffen the props. The Cabernet Sauvignon on our team. It also takes time to become a good hookah. And then they also tend to fall out of favor very quickly, as it so happened. So to us, uh, I think there's a beautiful array of red and black fruit flavors coming from the five different cultivars. Beautiful, acidic, mid palate feel, which I think with time in the bottle is just going to become better and better. And uh, I must say, Simon, uh, you did a good job there on Greg Sherwood, you know, within awarding the blend 94 points out of 100. And, uh, you know, we're very blessed to have that and very proud to be able to get that. And uh, also with Jeffrey Dean the other day coming out with a, with a, with a good, uh, you must probably can let us in a bit more on that tasting that you had with him. So uh, firstly, before we go any further, cheers on the Doddy, uh, Doddy's Red Man in 2019. Cheers, Simon. Thanks for everything. God bless yes. everybody. Yes. Cheers, Rob. Yes, um, and Dottie, what do you think of it? I know you like your red wine. I've shared many a bottle with you. Uh, what's your view on this one? Absolutely marvellous. I tell you what, Joe, this is all the dog guys who have done before have been great. But for me, I think this has been the best one by far. I've now drunk a half a bottle of wine <laughs> and a top bell. And with that, though, but joking aside, it's what life is all about, having a good time. And yes, there's a serious point behind the scenes. But if you were lined up for a dinner party, I think I would love to have all you guys round the table. So I meant to take all his accolades of what he's done in a way that he forgets the forwards won the ball to give it to him. To score all the tries that he did. But in serious note, in telling you, Henry always supporting the game, Simon's been truly amazing what he's done, the support he's given us, what he's taken us, and also Scrub, the most interesting individual I've ever had about work. I don't never ever. Um, that, that one, uh, the, the sort of technical knowledge that I had, and that was all the hard work that Emily's team have put in has been absolutely amazing. The wine tastes absolutely delicious. But not only that, at least the most amazing aftertaste in your mouth which I don't think you get from any other one. And I should say, the wine is available on our website and on the Sporting Wine Club's website, um, of which I'm also a happy member. Um, do drink it's carefully and sensibly, I should say. I think also it's you know, useful at this time just to quickly update you on what's going on with the foundation because we still uh, continue our campaign with MND Association, MND Scotland, and the wider MND community to ask the British government to invest 50 million pounds in a, a UK MND research institute. We had a debate in the hall last week, uh, and we continue to ask the government to invest in targeted MND research. And we are putting our money where our mouth is because today we announced that we are putting half a million pounds into a fund with two other funders, uh, an independent medical research charity called LifeArc and MND Association. They invested half a million pounds each. The MND Association money came from Kevin Sinfield's Seven Marathons in Seven Days. Ours has come from our amazing fundraisers. 
and we are hoping to co-fund research aimed at realising effective MND treatments more quickly. It's a translational research fund of one and a half million pounds uh, to support research projects focused on delivering new therapies or repurposing drugs already approved for other conditions. And we hope to deliver for patients. Uh, we want to go from lab to patient. And that's why we are collaborating, partnering with other people with the same goals as us. The only reason that we are able to invest half a million pounds, which is, which is a phenomenal amount of money, uh, is because people like Skalk and Simon and Henry and all the other people involved uh, support us. You know, we're really grateful to Aberdeen Standard Investments for their continued investment as well. We've had the Doddy Trek uh, just uh, last week, which involved a whole host of Doddy's former colleagues walking from the borders up to Edinburgh ahead of the, uh, the Lions match against Japan. We've got other activities planned over the course of the next uh, few weeks, including a, a big online prize draw and auction all the information's on the website, but everything that we are doing is aimed at the one clear vision that we have of a world free of MND. Our strategic plan was launched uh, over the course of the last 10 days as well. Again, so much information available on the website and it's as important for us to share how we are investing the, the funds as it is to talk to you about how we are raising those funds. And so I hope you are able to, to take a look at the website and see some of our news. But I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody who's been involved today. Um, Doddy, final word to you before you get too hot out there in the sunshine. I mean, Gatehouse is great. It looks like the Caribbean at the moment. Joe, who would have thought you? Yes, more job. Gates always the place. This is the place to be. Uh, without one of the most amazing dog cats. Thank you very much to Scott, Simon, Henry. You're amazing. What are you doing? What are you doing for yourself? One little question. Have you ever drawn a painted that John Deere tractor? <laughs> you, anything, Dotty. So I'm going to have a really quiet word to you. See you by John Deere tractor. But Joe, well done to you because I knew you did the Dotty track. 36 miles. What a great time it is this summer. You get to enjoy. Good weather. Good food, good company, but most of all, good wife. Quite right, quite right. And it, it, listen, great to see you looking so well, Doddy, and enjoying the time with the family there in the sunshine and, and you know, enjoy what's left of your break. And we'll see you very soon. Um, thanks to everybody for taking part today. A huge thanks to our friends at Aberdeen Standard Investments for the ongoing support. We really appreciate that. To the guys at Rugby Pass, especially Tim Groves, our producer and font of all knowledge, uh, and Jim Hamilton as well. We really couldn't do it without you. Um, and if, as I say, if there's anything you're interested in that we've been talking about today, you want to hear more about, you can go to the website or onto our social channels and learn more. But uh, from all of us here, enjoy the next few weeks of Lions Action and we'll be back very soon. Lots of love.